This is your girl, Yannick Taylor, a.k.a. Priestess, hostess of Conversations with the Priestess. Here's a preview of what you may hear on Conversations with the Priestess. We weren't meant for monogamy, let's be honest. Like, we have needs, let's be real. And communicating that, what you want, what you don't want, what sets up... Now, this drink is brown, because I learned something. Since I'm older, I can't do brown liquor anymore. Also, I noticed since I started on hormone replacement there at HRT in 2015, me and certain liquors don't mix, don't mix well. I don't know whether. And I recognize that a lot of men love to be dominated by women. And that's because men are seen as these leaders, as this big alpha male dominant thing, dominant being. And because they're put on this pedestal of being leader, sometimes they want to be submissive. Back when I cosplayed a butch queen in South Carolina around 2011, I was on Craigslist. This is when Craigslist was bumping and before they had gotten rid of the personal section. I hope you enjoyed that preview. Join me on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. for Priestess After Dark. Full video versions of the podcast can be found on patreon.com forward slash CWT Priestess. And join me on Fridays at noon for our regular Friday post. Live, love, and be free. Smooches. Available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, anywhere you download and stream podcasts. Hey, what's up, fam? This is Johnny T. Welcome to my journey in celibacy. Yes, I've decided to go on celibate. My initial goal is if I can make it two months, I want to see what happens. It may be a little longer, but we shall see. So y'all stick around for my journey in celibacy. All right. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is your Gurianni Taylor, the priest is never your mistress. Welcome back to another edition of Conversations with the Priestess. Um, This is day four. Um, And at the time of this, it'll be actually day five. But I'm going to talk about day four of me being celibate. So today was like any ordinary day. However, um, I had some things happen where we had someone to come by the house to look at some things. And I was on my way to work. I did my morning motivation on be go live and yeah i begin to just chill out and do my thing and just work on getting ready for work and making sure i'm okay mentally and that i'm not having a big crunch downtime and you know really being upset about life and all of that stuff so you know That's how I do in the mornings. I make sure that I'm okay. So. mm, Head on to work. And. I was kind of frustrated. Because of traffic and different things. And. Just thinking about a whole lot of things. And. um, I had some things that didn't quite work out like I wanted to. And I want to see Monday. What those things are giving. And making sure that I'm reaching the goals that I want to. But. I ain't gonna lie. A girl was wanting some through all of it. I was really wanting some. And oh my gosh. It was like on my way to work. All I saw was eye candy. Eye candy, eye candy, eye candy. And I'm like, oh my gosh. All these fine men. And I chose to be celibate. Oh my gosh. Like, really, I really chose to be celibate. And at a time like this, still summertime, all this fabulous eye candy out there. And, you know, I really felt like a fool because I was checking my social media last night. And y'all know I follow a lot of freak pages on Twitter and oh my gosh it was so much eye candy I'm like dang I want to fuck right now and I'm like wait bitch you celibate you got to stick this out and it was like all day today even while I was at work 
eye candy all day long. And I'm like, ooh, I want to sample this. I want to sample that. And I'm like, bitch, wait a minute. You're celibate. You got to figure you out. You got to figure out the matters of your heart and all this shit. So here I am trying to figure out the matters of my heart. And so I just went into an automatic prayer session. It's like, okay, bitch, just pray. Talk to the Lord about it. Just focus on work. Don't focus on what you have and don't have. You did your morning motivation and your meditations. Girl, just do you. And... I am sitting there at work, focused on work, focused on getting things done with my brand. And after that, I had to leave to go home. And I'm thinking, okay, what am I going to do when I get home? I got to do Beagle when I get home. I got to figure out this. And then I get home thinking about my drag shows that I have to do this weekend and um, on Beagle Live and stuff like that. And I'm like, bitch, I don't have anyone to share this with. And yeah, just someone that I'm in, that I've been entertaining the last few days. I'm having a hard time figuring out what I should do because of the extenuating circumstance. And I'm going to call it that. And I don't want to seem like a hypocrite. Or a fake person and I don't want to seem desperate, but of course, dealing with someone who is discreet and, you know, discreet may mean they don't want anyone to know that they're messing around because A, they could, you know, still be trying to figure out their sexuality or number two, they could be in a relationship and don't want to get caught up in no shit or You know, they may be married and their wife don't know that they get down with trans women. So it's like, eh, am I really built for dating someone who's discreet? And like I said, to me, being discreet and deal is the same thing. And it's trifling, especially if you are in a whole relationship with someone, especially a cis woman. And, you, you know. Because you know how black women do trans and queer people. You know, they throw us under the bus. But that's neither here nor there. But like for real, uh, it's that frustrating type shit. And it's complicated right now. It's, It's very complicated. It's very complicated at this point. Because I know what I stand for. But part of me is curious at this point could it have the potential to work could it not work or am I just delusional and I don't want to be delusional so I don't know I'm going to take a quick break because I need to get some water and I need to just eat something right quick so a bitch will be back okay smooches The great visionary leader of India, Mahatma Gandhi said, it is health that is real wealth and not pieces of gold and silver. Listen to the Healthy Grocer radio show on your favorite podcast platform. We know that health is our greatest wealth and we will be discussing all aspects of natural healing. Explore everything from supplements, superfoods, and healthy lifestyle choices to help conquer stress and boost productivity. Top industry experts and natural health professionals join us for a deep dive into our healing journey. You can find the Healthy Grocer Radio Show on demand every day, wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And remember, health is your greatest wealth. Hey fam, this is your girl Yanni Taylor, the priestess, never your mistress. Thank you so much for your love and support of conversations with the priestess. Um, in this journey and chapter of my life, it is greatly appreciated. Y'all, please check me out. Buy my music on Bandcamp. That's yanniktaylor.bandcamp.com. Also, check out my writings on vocal media and please support this podcast. We accept Cash App, Yannick T Music, and 
That's dollar sign Yannick T Music. Also by Kofi. That's co fi dot com slash Yannick Taylor. Thank you so much for your love and support. And please leave us a review. Share, share, share. Live, love, and be free. Smooches. Welcome back, niggas and bitches. Okay. So, back to this dilemma. So, okay. Guys, discreet. You know all of that bullshit. I'm not going to rehash that shit again. So... Oh. The guy is discreet, and this is the fucked up part. He actually checks in with me. We just talked a few times on the phone, duoed via Google, because I'm Apple, he's Android. And that's already unequally yoked right there, girl. Honey, at least be in the same phone family shit. Preferably Apple, because we apostolic in this house. But no, it's like he does all the things that I like for a guy to do when we first start coagulating before we consummate the relationship. In other words, we get to know each other before we fuck, okay? And he's like, you know, I want to get to know you and I want to meet you in person first. He's like, because I really like you. I really do like you. But me, the cynical bitch that I am, is like, hmm... I hear you, but me, I have to meet you and take my time with you at this point to know if I like you or not, to see if that's something I want to do. And I think that's coming from the place of the shit that I went through with my ex five years ago, who I'm finally dealing with the bullshit hurt that he inflicted on me instead of compartmentalizing that shit. And it's just wrecked my entire life. And I realized not even realize I realized this a while ago, but now it's like showing how in certain areas that nigga for five years ago still have a hold on me. And I don't like that shit. A bitch don't like that shit. The priestess don't like that shit. She want to be able to free to do however she needs to. And I'm like, I need to fully heal from him before Mr. Right will come along. But what if I've met my Mr. Right? You know, that's just my whole thing. So I'm sitting here thinking you know well what if this guy could be the one and I feel stupid for thinking about this and I'm gonna tell you why in a moment it's like okay bitch he's discreet you know you don't do discreet or DL guys you do guys who are comfortable with the fuck they are but then you are a trans woman people claim that the struggle is so hard and then also girl you're picky and my friend bless her heart got me to govern She's like, bitch, you have this list. This is why your ass is still single. You have this list. Because if a guy don't have this, I don't have that. You ran to discard him instead of giving him a chance. And I'm like, girl, well, this is different. I'm a trans woman. My life is threatened on a daily basis. Bitch, you got to understand, honey. Like, yes, I'm trans, but I deserve to have the same thing as anybody else. And... I started thinking, well, maybe because I am a trans woman, I'm limited. But then I said, no, I'm not limited because there are some strong black men that stand in their trans amorous life. And for lack of a better term, and there are some that will openly date a trans person. And I I, like I said, there's a difference between being private than being secretive. I understand you're not posting your mate on your social media as an internet personality such as myself I may not be on the grand scale of some of my forerunners but I have a following and uh, it's like also because of ministry I'm in the public eye a lot and I'm like can you handle that sometimes I'm going to be out with you and people are going to see us and want to run up to us you know I that's why I can't date anybody that's discreet because people are going to talk no shade and we had a one-on-one heart to heart he's like well i want to get to know you and see what this may bring and we'll cross that bridge when we get to it i've heard that before and that bridge never came we never crossed the bridge we went in a circle we went up under the bridge but didn't cross over we went back to the other side and it's like I've heard that so many times before, but 
We've dated for nine months. I haven't met your family. I don't know who any of your friends are. I haven't met the people that matter or the people that you claim you told me about. I don't need that kind of shit. And maybe I'm holding a grudge. Who fucking knows? That's one reason why I decided to be celibate instead of connecting with other people. Let me fix my shit. And like me personally, I love men, period, whether they be transgender or cisgender. And to be honest, I am really, I find myself really attracted to men, period, whether they're trans or cis, especially trans men. I don't know what it is Um, because a couple of months ago, I was entertaining two trans men and I'm not, I'm, and let me change this. They're men who happen to be of the trans experience. I'm going to put it like that because I don't want to be problematic as fuck. But, I mean, he's such a gentleman, smart, educated, but it's just a lot of complexities there. And then the other one that I dated, he ran into a situation where he had to move away to another state and he had already told me that hey I like you a lot I like you a lot but there is someone who who holds a special place in my heart basically and we've been in contact and I don't think it's fair to you for me to deal with you when I when my heart is really with this person and I got it I was hurt I felt some type of way and it's like oh my gosh that was it it was like and we tried to be friends I got stuff for him y'all we tried to be friends still but baby I didn't want to do that and at first I felt wrong by not still trying to be his friend but damn it's like what you said really hurt me like you knew I was feeling you you know like I had feelings for you and then damn you tell me that someone else is on your mind and it hurt it stung a lot and I finally removed him from my Facebook page early this week and I don't regret it I don't regret it at all you know and with this discreet guy it's like he's a sister in the mill and I'm like Uh, yeah I want to try it but then I don't want to look like a fool and a hypocrite because I'm like fuck D.O. men fuck discreet men that's just me but then it's like uh, you spit a good game and honestly I don't think I can fall for him right now I don't think I can really fall for him right now And I'm going to take a quick break and refresh myself. And I'm going to tell you why. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for listening to Conversations with the Priestess. I don't take this lightly. This is how that you can help support this black trans woman as she supports other black trans women. Please, people, hit my cash app up, dollar sign Yannick T Music. My Venmo is at sign Yannick T Music. Please, please, please support. You can even hit me up via PayPal. That's paypal.me forward slash Yannick Taylor. Everything is in my show notes. Watch out for my social media. Please, please help keep this podcast going. And please write into me, Yannick T Music at gmail.com. I want to hear your thoughts. Anything that you want to ask me. Now, just be respectful and keep it cute, girl. Keep it motherfucking cute. So I'm jumping back into great things and recording as much as possible hopefully you're liking the celibacy series live love me free from the priestess smooches so yeah back to the dilemma with the discreet dude why i feel like it's not going to work 
and I hope this person is not listening and they know who they are but I cannot date this guy because I am finally coming to terms with the fact that my best friend is not the best person to be in love with. Well, one of my best friends. Let me fix that. Because I have a couple of three. I have like three or four best friends. But. I fell in love with a best friend of mine. And my other, my main best friend, my best best friend. Knows about this and. One night we were at my place chilling and oh my God, like they start looking appealing to me and it kept ringing forth like, uh, and I finally said, you know, I got to deal with this shit. And I felt like an idiot because I was falling in love with my best friend and I'm like, they do all of the things that, you know, you would think a boyfriend does. And it's like, ah, oh. and I'm so embarrassed about that. And if they hear this, I'm sorry, I didn't tell you then, but you're hearing it now. And I hope this don't fuck up our friendship. And it's like, huh. And he says all the things when I call him. And granted, we're miles and miles and miles apart. I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. And he gets a bit annoying sometimes, but I like the attention. But then also, one of the things that also led to this journey in celibacy is the fact that I had sex with my ex a while, a couple of weeks, about a week or so ago at the time of this podcast. And the sex was good, and we had verse sex. And He topped me first and oh my God, it was just so magical. And the way he topped me, it felt like, oh my God, like it felt so passionate. It felt so movie like it was like so it made me feel so good and it like made me feel so vulnerable and I did not want to feel that vulnerable with him because I'm like you're my ex I'm not supposed to feel that way about you like oh my gosh and I tried to play it off but I really wanted him to keep going like that because I was just enjoying that moment and plus I really wanted some dick I ain't gonna lie I really wanted some dick but then we flipped roles and I ended up topping him and going ham. And it was like, oh my gosh, like that sex was actually good. And I'm like, okay, like you getting back in your feelings and stuff. And I'm like, you know, I just, uh, to really think that I'm like having those feelings and that vulnerability, it kind of scared me because I'm like, I hate feeling I'm at a place now. I don't want to be vulnerable to anybody right now. I want to, cause I feel like if I'm vulnerable, I'm going to let my guard down and I'm going to get broken into pieces and made to look like a fool. And I don't want that. But then I'm like, girl, it's okay to be vulnerable because I tell my best friend this all the time. Girl, be vulnerable. It's not going to hurt you. But here I am scared of being vulnerable. I'm like, I feel like such a fucking hypocrite. And it's like, oh, my God, bitch, shut up. And uh, this is all of the things I had to deal with on day four of celibacy. Like, for real. And just dealing with gender dysphoria is another thing in and of itself. Because all the while I'm like, all of these people are saying, oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. You're so gorgeous. And I'm like, I'm in the midst of a transition from one gender to another. And 
I'm like, can y'all really see the beauty in me? And it wasn't until April the 1st, 2020, the day my grandmother left this earth. Let me take that back. It wasn't even then. On my birthday this year, that's when I realized how beautiful I was. Then it got even better with the day my grandmother passed. Because I remember her telling me, she said, you're gorgeous. You're a beautiful child. Don't let nobody tell you no different. And how now even hearing from my my best friends, I know they be gassing me up, but even hearing that from love interest, like, oh my gosh, you are so fucking beautiful. Like you are mad sexy. Like, and just hearing that I'm like, y'all playing, y'all playing because I'm so used to people playing on my intelligence and stuff like that. Abuse. I know we'll talk about that later. And it's like now I'm seeing my own beauty and I'm loving who I am. Bitch, I've been feeling myself these last several months and I love it because I was at a point to where I didn't feel myself like that. I didn't gas my own self up like that. I was ashamed of who I was. So now I'm back in a better place. So, but that's enough of me ranting and raving. I got a little bit of herb and a little bit of alcohol in my system. So, I'm going to end it right here before I go a little too far. So y'all live, love, and be free from the priestess. Bye, bitches. I would like to give thanks for the song Sweet as Honey. Oh my gosh, I mentioned the artist in the previous episode um, by Topher Moore and Alexa Elena. Y'all, please download their music. They're on all music outlets. Live, love, and be free. Mm-hmm.